It's always great when you come back to Iowa. I look forward to it very much every year. I come back every year normally. Um, uh, my wife and I loved it while we were here. It's an emotional, it's an emotional happening when I come back here. I looked out my window this morning, looking all the way back to the campus, and thinking, "Man, we did some. It was hard work, but it was certainly uh, rewarding. We've never met people quite like the Iowans, and um, I always pull for them to win. I don't care who they're playing against, and I stay, in, I stay in touch with the Iowa State people." Unfortunately, a lot of our friends have, uh, have left us. They're not living now, and our friends have dwindled down to a, a lot of the precious few. And I'll be seeing some of those this afternoon. It's uh, I don't know how I can mess up the English language sometimes, but uh, made it. I guess you might say uh, if that's correct, indelible imprint on Mary Lynn and my lives, and it'll be there as long as we live. It was uh, something we couldn't forget, and. Uh, because it, again, it was a struggle, but the fun was in the doing, and to see how many people who helped us, and who supported us, and worked with us to help us be competitive, and uh, it was really exciting when we went to the Sun Bowl for the first uh, bowl uh, invitation and bid in the Iowa State history, and we left our drive. We left our driveway on Ontario Street. And just in April, going to Pittsburgh with a station wagon and a little U-Haul trailer behind us. I'll never get as long as I live when I back the wagon out with our two small kids. And Mary Lynn says, John, I don't know what the rest of our lives will be like or the rest of your career will be like, but nothing could ever top the last seven, the last five years at Iowa State. And to this day, it's true. Nothing could ever top those those five years and the excitement of going to the Sun Bowl and seeing the people celebrate till, till dark out on the field with a band playing. Uh, so uh, <laughs> I got to thinking about it. I got, I got to get about, I ran into about five or six guys from Iowa down at the at Maud's restaurant last night. And I, I spent about 30 minutes probably boring with the Iowa State stores. We had a lot of fun. I says, you guys remind me so much of the guys that I used to run with here at the Elks Club, stay up late at night, Country Club with Jackie Sherrill, Jimmy Johnson, Larry Lazel, Joe Alvisano. We played hard, we worked hard, we stayed up late a lot, but we also got up early and worked. It's a, it's a great, this is a great state. And I don't think, and I've told people all over the country, I don't think that you, that you can't go anywhere in the United States that they're more pragmatic, more practical, more self forthright, and fewer phonies per capita, I think, than any place in America. They don't show their money. If they got it, they're not going to tell you how much they've got. And if you work hard, they'll be patient with you. And I want them to be patient with Paul Rose because he'll work hard. He's a great guy. He's good with the community. He's very outgoing. He's easy to like. I think he's a good football coach, and he certainly has a good background. And at the time he was picked, I, I was quoted, and I believe this strongly, I don't believe Iowa State could have picked a better person for the job at this particular time. Time will only tell when you, whether you win or lose. And this is a challenging job, but there have been people who have been successful here, and Paul Rhodes has got the right stuff, I believe, to be successful here. Go over your relationship with Paul. How do you, how did you get to know him? And <coughs> When I stopped coaching at Pittsburgh after the 1996 season, Paul, uh, Walt Harris succeeded me. He had worked for me at Tennessee as my offensive coordinator and quarterback coach. He succeeded me, and after a couple of years, his defensive coordinator moved to the pros, and he hired Paul Rose. In fact, pa pa Paul was hired when that other coordinator did move to the pros. I forget his name right now. But, um, Paul stepped up as coordinator and did a very good job for uh, Walt Harris. When Walt left. Uh, to go to Stanford, Dave Wonstead, one of my former players and captains, succeeded Walt Harris, and I spent a lot of time over at the football practice fields, not trying to help him coach, but if I thought I saw something would help, I'd, I'd tell Walt or I would tell uh, Dave Wonstead. And I got to know Paul very well. I watched him practice on the field. I've been in uh, his staff meetings. He asked me to come over quite often. 
uh, to uh, talk to the assistant coaches and defensive staff about tackling and pursuit and uh, some of my thoughts. And uh, we had a great relationship, and we still do. He's, he's a friend. I wanted to see him win. I want to see Pitt win. I want to see them be successful, and they have been. And Paul was a big reason for that. So we get along socially. I like the way he coached on the field. I like the way he approached his uh, staff meetings and the way he approached and led his players. I know him very, very well. Mm -hmm.